Around a year and a half ago, in the seventh round of the 2018 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles took a flyer on a young player, a former rugby star who was hoping to make it into the NFL, having never played a snap of the sport. Forget college, forget high school, he had never played the sport before. But the man was an absolute athletic freak of nature at 6 foot 8, 346 pounds with 35 inch arms. That man was Jordan Mylata, and by the time preseason rolled around, Jeff Stoutland had already laid the foundations in a project offensive tackle that maybe, just maybe, could go down as one of the biggest hidden gems in recent draft memory. Mylata made the final 53 man roster, but understandably didn't see any game time last year. So for 12 months, we didn't have any real concept of how Mylata was progressing. Was he improving? Regressing? Where is his ceiling? We didn't really know until preseason this year, where in three out of four games, Mylata pretty much played every single down. So where is Mylata currently in his development? How much has changed in the space of 12 months? And what does the outlook look like for the next 12 months? My name is Liam Jenkins, and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started guys, make sure you leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and enjoy this sort of content. And as always, don't forget you can get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. Eagles football is finally upon us and we're here to try and bring you the very best content every single day, as well as interacting with the best fan base on the entire planet. Let's start off at the very beginning and the first thing an offensive lineman does, which is of course the kick step. And my latter line Last year, understandably, was oversetting quite a lot of the time. He'd be leaping so far back because of his size. And this year, the first thing that jumped out is that looks dramatically cleaned up. He's a lot more concise, a lot more compact with his kick step. And that leaves him in good stead to get perpendicular with the pass rusher. If we freeze frame here, look at his shoulders. They're square. His feet are shoulder width apart, knees bent. And that gives him a solid foundation to really utilize those 35-inch arms and wrap himself around the pass rusher. This was the pass that should have been complete. But thanks to my Lata, Sudfeld at least had time to throw. Here's another example of that kick step once again. Just look at how his hands stay lower as well. His whole body position is a lot more ready to embrace contact as opposed to almost going out and searching for it. He's waiting for the pass rusher to come to him. And that is crucial for an offensive tackle. You don't want to lay your hands on first. And he is a lot more conservative with that now. And look at what that enables him to do. If we compare this to a play from his first ever taste of preseason action, look at how big that kick step is and already Already, he's at a disadvantage against the pass rusher. He can't square up. He's having to work from behind and all of that top weight is carrying over and he's unfortunately given up a quarterback hit there. Here's another one from that same game where he just can't seem to leverage that body weight because the solid foundation isn't there. Whereas in comparison to this play against the Titans, it's a short kick step. He's nice and compact and he's able to then drive that weight into the pass rusher. Something that always surprised me with my Lata was just how intelligent he was. And we saw a great example of that against the Ravens with some blitz record. He passes off number 56, keeps his head up and immediately darts outside to just get enough of a touch on the blitzing defensive back to make sure the quarterback doesn't take a hit. Look at the head up, he's already angled, he senses the pressure coming, hands off number 56 to Wiz and bounces outside to drive that 35 inch wingspan into Cyrus Jones. Here's an example of a similar thing against the Browns last year. Again, credit to Fran Duffy for this clip as it was in the last video, but just a great play of Mylata to keep his head up, be aware of the oncoming pass rusher, and just hand it off so seamlessly. That's something you normally see from tackles who have experienced that sort of thing, or defenses trying to pick them apart, not someone who's never played the sport before. But Mylata still has a lot of room to grow, and the one thing that has carried over from last year into this year is the fact that he has a tendency to over set and really push that upper body weight and that's natural because of how you tackle in rugby where his lower body sort of stays stagnant and in the NFL pass rushers will eat you alive for that. There's a QB pressure there on Clayton Thorson. As a result of that he ends up reaching and trying to push away while his legs get away from him because there's no coordination and that's the one thing that over time is obviously going to have to evolve in his game if he's going to make it as a backup or a starter at this level. Here he delivers a nice punch number 56 but gets beaten inside because he gets rocked off that stance. 
chance. I think this is perhaps the best example against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mylata kicks back, he's nice and compact, and the second he can't get that outside arm in, he's reaching with the upper body and almost clawing his way back into the plate, relying on that massive wingspan, but his lower body doesn't really move. He's already then massively oversetting, almost hunching over and reaching with every bit of energy he has. He did it here against the Pittsburgh Steelers last year as a rookie. The difference was that that wingspan enabled him to get back into the plate and recover well. He's not going to have that luck every single time, as was just evidenced by the play against the Jags. Here's another play against the Browns from his rookie year, where pretty much the same sort of thing happens again. You see him line up. It's a bit of a different kick step here. You can see him take a little bit more ground underneath his feet, but the end result is just reaching and not adjusting that lower body. And again, that will come in time. The other thing I've noticed is that he's a lot more conservative with his hand placement. He's not reaching. I mentioned it slightly earlier in this video, but you get a much closer look at it here against the Tennessee Titans. Look at how compact those hands are. He's ready to embrace that contact, like I mentioned before. The second that inside arm comes in, then he can run the ring and push Sharif Finch to the ground. It was predominantly his main matchup against the Titans that night, but this is something that was echoed throughout preseason. Here's one against the Baltimore Ravens. Just watch the hand placement here and how he's able to push the defensive end in the dirt with absolute ease. Now, the defensive end gets a jab on him, gets that first step. Mylata completely unrocked, swats him in the back and pushes him into the dirt. He's got a really, really powerful first punch, but he doesn't need to use it all the time. And he's now developing ways to constantly reset those hands and keep him in the plate at shorter leverage, sustaining blocks, which is where he struggled before. Now here he gets that inside arm under the pass rusher, which is absolutely huge. And then as a result, he's able to sustain it all the way through the block. That wasn't in his game last year. This time against the Titans, look at how open he is, almost encouraging Sharif to get underneath. That inside arm again into his chest, just throws him back and is then able to disengage and re-engage. Mylata in control of the play, not reacting and constantly having to reset like we see here against the Cleveland Browns. He's a man that now has an understanding of what pass rushes are going to throw at him. And if you look at it here, that outside arm is outside of the pass rushes, which means he's going to get thrown off and is automatically on the back foot. And because of that, he's now able to run the ring, as I call it, or running the arc, depending where you get your scouting information from, a lot more prominently. It's a lot more based on power as opposed to panic. And you can see him just throw guys around for fun now. It's evident in the run game as well, but especially in pass protection, he just has fun pushing a guy into the ground, being able to really counter that move with sheer power, just swinging him the long way round, and you love to see it again here against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is that same clip from earlier, but watch him reach for the opposing tackle, and he loses the battle, has to recover, and again it's that frame that saves him, whereas now we're seeing a very different Jordan Mylata. Here he is though against the Cleveland Browns, look at the hand usage, we knew the potential is there, we're now seeing it on a much more consistent basis, which was the one thing we didn't see last year. Look at how Mylata just waits and waits and then picks up the pass rush. And now he absorbs a stab there on a bull rush and is somehow able to deflect that away. He played it a bit risky. You'd have liked to see some earlier contact. He opens himself up there trying to push that outside arm away. But then as a result, look at this. It's like you push a rock and that rock is going to give you a concussion. Look at that. He saves the quarterback's life, throws the other guy to the ground. Big time play there from Jordan Mylata. What we're seeing is a rising confidence from Mylata. Someone that is able to allow pass rushes that little bit more momentum just to counter with that much more power. And even when he is beaten on plays like this, it's not the end of the world anymore. There's no state of panic. Just look at this here. Able to constantly reset his hands. And although his lower body does get away from him and he oversets a little bit, just look at that inside arm. And he knows he can push back with more and just throw the opposing lineman away. Great effort. Great hustle from my Mylata, who I think now is really trusting in those instincts. The only thing that does worry me at this point is that he hasn't really experienced a lot of counter moves. Spin moves he seems to have mastered because the man is an actual behemoth, but anything else I think he may come into contact with at the NFL level from the more premier pass rushes, he may struggle, but again that's part of the learning curve. And finally, on to run defense, and this is an area I think has improved. The only real criticism I have here is that when my Mylata gets in the open field at the second level, he has a tendency to just flail around not really find a target or hone in on anything, but more just absorb open space. And when he does eventually deliver a block, that
that block is then a quick chip and he's on the floor. So that needs to be honed in. But aside from that, look at the lane he's carved out here for the running back check down route to open and the window for the quarterback to throw the ball. He's just asked to use raw power in run blocking. The results are just monstrous. He gains so much leverage. Look at the lane he's carved open there. Now the second level block wasn't his fault. That was down to number 61, Stefan Wisniewski. But you see another example of it here and watch how much momentum he's going to gain just driving and driving and driving. There is no stopping that truck once it gets going. It's an 18 wheeler. We see it again against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You do not want to get into a battle of power against Jordan Mylata. And in run blocking, that's kind of all he needs to do. Apart from when he gets to the second level and you do start to see those errors where he hasn't really been accustomed to trying to track a defender in the open field or open a block on a screen or something like that. Those are the areas I think in year three, the more intricate nuances of the game that are going to start coming to him. But the development from year one to year two is a more concise, more aware and far more importantly, more confident offensive lineman that has garnered the Eagles respect. Jeff Stoutland is extremely high on him and that is why he again was not exposed to waivers. Jordan Mylata remains on the 53 man roster. Now, is he going to see any offensive action? I highly doubt it unless other instances dictate now that Andre Dillard is in the picture. But nonetheless, the project keeps going and Jordan Mylata keeps progressing. But guys, let me know down in the comments what you think of this video. What's changed? Is there anything you've noticed that I haven't? Or maybe something where you think I'm a little bit wrong on or I've completely missed. I need you guys to keep me posted down in the comments. Thank you so much for all of the support you've given this channel. I'm so happy Eagles football is back and I promise we're going to give you everything we can to make this journey a fun one. Make sure you stay tuned for more content. I'll see you next time.